Hello, hello everybody, it's 2.56 p.m. Central Time on the 22nd of May, 2023. Hope you're doing well. We are here to talk about seismic events. Oh, it's Monday, by the way, here in the States. But we are here to talk about seismic events and a few other things that I have to show you. And this video, I'm going to have to ask my viewers to send to the Department of Defense. So right off the bat, this is going to be a big deal because of what I found. And we have to get a hold of the Department of Defense publicly because there's no way privately anyone's going to listen to me unless I show everybody what I found. This has to do with operational security and military preparedness and our soldiers and military giving away their position on the freaking battlefield and we can pick it up on the weather ra on the weather satellite not radar on the satellite and i can prove this now by taking you over to the current satellite view of the united states from last night and we're going to start this update with this before we go into the seismic so what we're going to do is we're going to turn on shortwave infrared so whatever's happening here is happening on the shortwave infrared bands. And it's giving away positions. Communicate right there. Okay. People tried to tell me this was a, a missing panel, a, a stitching error from satellite or whatever. No. See this right here? This is from 2020. And this is beaming down into the middle of Tyndall Air Force Base. And this is where people told me it was chance and coincidence. And that it was a stitching error. And this is years ago now. Three years ago. Going down into Tyndall Air Force Base. Got a whole video on it. We also caught this going down, something like this, going into the fires out in California. The reason I'm showing this going into Tyndall Air Force Base, and you guys can go watch this video from 2020, is because this one... Let's go zoom in on it. Let's go zoom in on it. So it's not a stitching error. Boom. Wow. Way bigger. Where is it beaming down to? Well, let's go look and see what is at the center of where the beam is going or coming from. It's down here in Louisiana. Right here. Right across. Here's New Orleans. And here's slide L. Let's just make sure that we're matching that up right. That's right. You can see it. And maybe I could even zoom in closer. It's possible, maybe. Yeah, okay. There it is. It's coming from the north side of the bay. Why does that matter? Well, let's go right up here, right across the bridge, up here to the north side, and see what's there. Well, it looks like we've got a few subdivisions. And what else do we have? A National Guard Training Center. National Guard Training. we got the National Guard Training going on out here. Now, I'm not going to show the exact location. You guys are welcome to look it up if you need to. If you're in the military, you know what I'm talking about. You've got your big National Guard Training going on out here. Okay. So right next to the Marsh National Wildlife Refuge, all right? Again, we're, this is not up for debate. So if you know about the National Guard training that's down here, right here on the north side, and guess what else is right here on the north side? The next rad radar station is also right next to it. So this is a big deal. Because this is multiple times now where I'm catching on weather satellite live a beam that's coming from or going to one of our military places and it gives away the location. It gives away location on the ground and up in the sky or in space. So you have to look at this three-dimensionally now because we're looking down from above. And so this would be a low earth orbit satellite or airplane that beams down or they beam up too. And this is a giant wide disturbance that's picked up on the infrared. Infrared now. Let's look at long wave infrared and see how it shows up on long wave infrared.
by the way, doesn't show up on long wave infrared. Instead, this gets me into the second part of this video, a second beam shows up coming from the same relative location, but it's beaming down to the other Nexrad radar station over in western Louisiana. And we can go look at the ra radar stations to go compare on location. Lake Charles. Okay. So, long wave is beaming down to the next rad. Short wave is beaming down to the other next rad and the National Guard Training Center. Now, there's no way radar, microwave radar, should be showing up on short wave infrared. The two systems should not overlap or combine at all. There should be, we should never see a, a Nexrad radar station in shortwave, first of all. So that right there, beaming from or to two things that are there. Nexrad radar station and National Guard Training Center. Next to it, on long wave, over in western Louisiana, at about the same altitude, whatever that is, whether that's space or up in the sky, beaming down to here in long wave. So short wave going down to one, long wave going down to the other. Can't be chance with both next rads, and I'm willing to bet there's likely something around the other next rad station, military-wise. So if we were to go over into western Louisiana over here by Lake Charles, we may find, and I don't know if there is, I know about the one over on the other side. I do not know what's around here at Lake Charles. I mean, there's an airport, but that's probably public. If there's a giant military training facility right in here, then it's a slam dunk on both of them. Anyway, I have to show that to you first because, man, look, it beamed down in the middle of Tyndall Air Force Base, beamed down into the National Guard thing here. So you can see back in 2020, it's a slightly different type of a, a narrower beam, if you will. And people tried to tell me it was chance or coincidence that it beamed down into Tyndall Air Force Base. Well, now you're going to have to tell me it's chance or coincidence at multiple military bases. And I rule out chance and coincidence once it's happened multiple times. Why am I taking the time to show all that to you? Well, we've got some seismic that's going on across the plate that I'm not saying it's related the beam-wise. I'm just saying there's a lot going on going across North America right now, specifically going down through the south and back up to the northeast. And that doesn't even count what's happening over on the West Coast or internationally or down in Mexico with the new eruption and fires or up in Canada with all the fires and some really, really weird stuff going on with the weather out in California. So there's a lot going on and I need to get into all of it before this whole update's over. Now, what am I talking about out in California with the weird weather? Well, other people are talking about the weird weather. You can see the leftover remnants of this. Oh, by the way, there's the beam from <laughs> right there. But look at the West Coast. Look at all those storms blowing up uh, again from yesterday. But what you're going to see is this giant thing going on in a U-shape down through New Mexico, back up through Arizona, going up into Nevada and all along through California, down along the San Andreas, it's following the faults down into Mexico. So last night, and you won't see this last night, I don't think. You'd have to be looking last night. Down in Mexico, there was a straight line of clouds coming from the mountains as if a fault is steaming or something. I'm not saying that a fault is steaming. I would say something much greater is going on. Much, much greater. So, other people are talking about the storm formation happening here because of atmospheric river flows coming from the Pacific. No one is taking into account the huge amount of smoke that's coming in from the Northwest, which you can see here at sunrise. And throughout the day today, it should really become illuminated to the point where you can barely even see through it. The amount of smoke coming out of Canada. So with the weather out in California, and I see it blowing up along the fault, it literally is, this is current right now. 
Now, yesterday, storms blowing in from over here to the east and blowing up and going to the west. So it, it's not coming from the Pacific, at least in yesterday. With all the particulate matter from the smoke, I wouldn't be surprised. But when I start seeing stuff like this, Fraser Park, Southern California, and then look at this. Look at this line. Of... Right? Okay, There's. it's just when you start seeing stuff like that, you need to pay attention just in case. Just in case what? Heat being released along fault zone. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Heat being released causes steaming in the aquifer, steaming up to the surface, basically. Not like geysers. Over many miles, it would just be mass evaporation over a huge area as heat comes up on the underside of the plate. Let's go in and take a look and just show you what I'm talking about here. So here we are this morning. So now, this shape here should be significant for a lot of people who watch my channel right through here. Why would that shape matter to a lot of people? The deformed edge of the craton, the purple part. The purple part is getting this. And it's getting excessive to the point where people are noticing. Okay, uh, like normal people are noticing, asking questions and stuff. Now, this is all happening here in the States with all the steam off. Then up to the north, you got the fire situation going on that's absolutely insane. It, it, it's next level, man. I, it, look, here, look at yesterday. Watch this. Here's yesterday. This is all smoke. Over to the east. Everything east of the mountains is smoke with a few white clouds mixed in. That's all smoke. Where it gets real milky over here, all of this. And it's blowing up even more last night. Now you'll notice atmospheric flow coming in from the south. Going up to the northwest. I think they're probably doing as much weather modification as they can on this. Who knows what they're using? Probably every trick in the book. So showing this to you because this is happening on the north side of the Craton up to the north. Then across the Craton down to the south, we're getting this massive steam off type event following the edge of the freaking Craton itself. Pardon my language. Freaking is not a bad word, but almost. And then we go down to Mexico, and it's carrying on with actual fires and blasts at volcanoes. It could be regular precipitation. It could. It could. But at this point, I'm not ignoring anything. I'm paying attention to every single thing that's happening across the edge of the plate because of what's going on with the seismic and the solar. Now, this gets me into my seismic update now. Now that we've gotten all that out of the way... U.S. military installations and NEXRAD radar stations showing up on shortwave frickin' infrared. Gotta be kidding me, dude. It can't be the NEXRAD. It's gotta be the military next to it. Gotta be. They're probably communicating in shortwave infrared. Up to space. Or, or plane or something. I mean, there is the possibility it's enemies observing us using shortwave infrared. But, whatever. It's showing up on the weather. You can't tell me it's chance or the weather visible satellite. Visible satellite, well, not visible to the human eye, but shortwave infrared from space. And that gives away positions. So I don't know, you need to get talk to Noah, figure out how to remove that completely from the feed or change your system, change your frequency. And I mean completely off of shortwave infrared, which would mean a new satellite probably. The unintended, right? Like showing up on a weather system. You would never, like an average Joe goes and see the frickin' Russians to see where our guys are beaming up from in the frickin' woods. Okay. I say freaking now instead of the F word, guys. I'm working on it. Now let's talk about the seismic activity. We've got major seismic going on. Our large 7.7 to 8.0 earthquake. Some people reported in at 7.9. That's our big earthquake that we're looking for here on the screen, marked in pink. Now, in white is everything that has struck since. So, going across over to the west, 6.1, 5.3, 5.3, 5.2 to 5.3. Three sets of 5.3s going over to the west plus a 6 right next to the 7. Well, when I say right next to, it's 1,000 miles away, but a 6, 1,000 miles downstream. 
Downstream really means that look which way the arrows point. And look which way the earthquake struck since the 7. So going over to the west, big cluster gets over to the S-shaped plate boundary over at Indonesia and then is directed to the north. And same time, the wave is going down and around and Dutch sense period here, or Dutch sense That's a little apostrophe above my name. My underwater base got hit. I came up to broadcast to you because of it. Anyway, down here on the plate boundary down to the south. Another 5.3, 5.4, something like that. So it's a 5.3, 5.3, 5.4, 5.3, 5.5, 5.2. It's all the same sized earthquake activity spreading out around the Indo-Australian plate boundary. Let's go show you the Indo-Australian plate boundary in case you're new here. This is the Indo-Australian plate boundary, the big plate here with the red lines around it. Now notice the earthquakes are going all the way around the outside edge. All the same size too. So what's going on here? A wave is going around the outside edge. And it's dropping off the earthquakes along the way. Somewhat equally spaced, like a wave has equally spaced wave peaks across a vast body of water. And they're all about the same size. Again, just like waves spreading out across a lake. In this case, the lake we're spreading across is the Indo-Australian plate. And we're only seeing the activity across the edges because that's where the wave comes up. The rest of the plate's solid. Or some more solid. Meanwhile, there's a crack around the outside edge that this wave can go through. And that's exactly what it's doing. It goes up to the north and another 5.4 to 5.5. South Japan, a 5.1 to 5.3 struck next to Tokyo. And then we take a step down from there to 4.9s. 4.9, 4.5, 4.4, 4.2, 4.1. .4 I'll get to the other 5.5 over here off the coast of the United States. So how many is that? Ah, 5.4 to 5.5 down by the Dutch Sense base, a 5.5 over by the huge earthquake, a 6 in the middle of the whole hot mess, a 5s, another 5.5 up by Japan, and then a 5.5 off the coast of the United States. So it's a spread of a huge wave of 5.5s. There's separate waves going on here. Here's our wave of 5.5s and 5.3s. You see the spacing. It's huge. It's tens of thousands of miles across between each earthquake. Each earthquake representing a point where the wave comes up. Okay, now let's talk about Europe and Asia because another set of five struck across China. And it's been a minute since we've seen any earthquake activity at all get reported out of China. They went radio silent when it comes to seismic activity, which is super weird. Did they figure out a way to absorb and expend seismic waves? Make themselves earthquake immune? I doubt it. But I would think that with silence comes a buildup of energy. And that means we're looking at a significant sized earthquake to strike in China. But the last two times that I issued warnings for China to be on watch for 6.0 plus activity, 4.0s hit. And the wave went across China like normal, without any blocking, without any reflection into itself, without any big break. The wave went right around the edge of the plate and over into Europe. Now we see a stepping stone path of the same sized earthquakes. Take a look. We're looking at everything 3.0 greater reported from the USGS. 4.5, 4.3, 4.1, 4.4, 4.5, 4.4. You see it? See the spacing on that? That's like a wave where each one of these is a peak of the wave or, or the valley, but I think the peak. And each peak of the wave is dropping off an earthquake along the way. And we get 4.9 and 4.9, 4.5, and 4.5, 4.4, and 4.4. It's the leapfrog effect of a standing wave reflecting into itself. So it came in, went over, reflected back, and here's where we are now. It's reflecting back into itself at 4.9 level. It's taking a step up, just like when a, re a reflection of a standing wave in a tank goes down to one end and it reflects back into itself and it pumps itself up. That's what's happening here. And the standing wave is coming from over here and it's coming from down below over here in the west pacific are deep earthquakes now i've got warnings going and they expire to today basically for three different locations tomorrow today into tomorrow 
We're looking for up to 14 days on these big earthquakes for Japan. I think I just lost my internet. If I did, I'm still recording. It's okay. So we're looking off the coast of Japan at Tokyo. We're looking down here at Sumatra, Indonesia. We're also watching for a potential extremely large earthquake down here in Chile. And the fourth spot, which still has many more days to go, is Mexico. And Mexico with Popocatépetl volcano sending off multiple large blasts. Which can be seen on the animation for today. Well, the animation, whatever, satellite view. Right here where my mouse is. And you'll see a plume of smoke puffing off there. That's not smoke, that's ash. And the volcanic ash advisories go out into the Gulf of Mexico. In case you didn't catch that. So Popocatépetl has been in the news down in Mexico for the past two days with the 30 and near 40,000 foot high blasts that have been taking place. Anyway, Mexico is where we're, we're watching. Mexico, Chile, Japan, and Indonesia. And here. And we already saw the big earthquake here. So the biggest of the bunch already hit. The eight already hit. We're waiting for the smaller earthquakes that I issued the forecast for, for Japan, Indonesia, Chile, and Mexico to go. So one out of five. Like, I'm at 20% right now if we're counting me by the total number of forecasts issued. Thank God we don't judge forecasting based upon that. I had somebody come over and say, you named 10 areas and five of the areas got hit. Forecasting's no better than flipping a quarter. And I, I said 50-50, right? And I, and I said, What? I go, you're judging me cumulative total on the total number of areas like this is some kind of ball game or something? We judge each location. And it was said to be impossible to know even one location. So if I have 10 locations and we're talking about 10 spots and one of those spots gets hit, that's one out of 10. Correct. Out of the total number of spots that have been hit. But they said it was impossible to know even one location. We don't judge by the total number of areas that I've warned. It, like, like it's some kind of tally total. Like, oh, uh, Dutch warned nine locations and uh, seven got hit. Uh, it, 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 that's insane. Or two or one. You can't judge it cumulative total. We don't, like for instance, let me give you an example. The weather forecasters issue a forecast for Oregon, California, Washington, Nevada, and then they issue a forecast for the Intermountain States of Colorado, and then they issue a forecast for the Midwest, and they issue a forecast for the East Coast. Let's just say they do that. They do that. And they get the Midwest forecast right, and they get the other three wrong. Do we judge them based upon the total cumulative total of the areas that they got right versus wrong? <laughs> It's insane to do that, so that's why I have to bring that up. Now back to the quakes. It's the United States. This earthquake here at Eureka is what we were looking for seven days ago. What happened seven days ago? Seven days ago, the other 5.5 struck just east over here on eastern California. The same sized earthquake, right down to a point almost. A 5.5 to 5.6 struck eastern California, literally due east of this one that just hit. So first, the one hit on land, then moved forward a week, and the one struck out at the Juan de Fuca fracture zone. But before that one struck out on the Juan de Fuca, this one hit down at the California-Nevada border. There's something here at the location that I think you need to see in light. Of all the oil wells and natural gas deposits blowing up and burning up in, Cal up in Canada. What's going on down here in California? Oh, and the huge blasts happening down south in Mexico and the fires down there. What are we at? Look at this. See this feature here? See where it says Yubihibi Crater? This is Crater, California. Sylvania. Ooh. Uh-oh. But we won't go into the Sylvan thing. But down here, this, these, the Yuba Hebe craters, massive features. Little Hebe and Yuba Hebe. 
Anyway, we're on the side of it right here, and we're on the north side. They moved the earthquake epicenter on this, by the way. It was here in the salt flats. Now they've moved it across the border, literally a few hundred feet across the border over into Nevada. Get it away from that volcano. Now, I wonder how far that is, because I said I look up to 40 miles away to see if it's related to a volcano. And they moved it. Well, now it's 19.6 miles away from Yubihibi. There may be something else here worth looking at, but I don't have anything marked. Yubihibi is the nearest, and we look within 40 miles, it's 20 miles away. So what's going on? The volcanoes are moving. That's what's going on. The volcanoes are moving. We have major steaming going on, uh, coming up out of the plate, I, in my estimation now. That's what's going on. We got the fires up north. We got the volcanoes down south. We got the edge of the Craton steaming and moving with earthquakes. The only thing missing now are fires in the United States. Major fires, like huge. Now let's go take a look at the earthquakes up in the northwest and down here to the south. You'll see big stacks of earthquakes. This is about a day and a half's worth of earthquakes. So we have what's called swarming going on. There's big swarms of earthquakes taking place now. Starting at Yellowstone. Don't be alarmed. They actually announced that Yellowstone has deflated over the past few months. But that they need to study. They just came out with some new periodical on, on Yellowstone saying that they don't really understand the mechanics behind the last eruption now. I'm going to say it. It's a blasted out backside of a star fort. It's not even a super volcano. It's not a super volcano. It's the blown out backside of a giant ancient star fort. That's what it is. I'm not kidding. It's not a super volcano. So anyway, there's a bunch of earthquakes that keep striking there. Now, why? Well, there's magma down below. And supposedly. And magma down below, we get earthquakes up above that are not tremors. These are actual breaks in the plate. Small earthquakes, breaks in the plate, as opposed to the hundreds, if not thousands of tremors that happen per day there. So it's a swarm in the park. But then you'll see a stepping stone path of earthquakes going up through Montana, back up to the northwest. Now, I caught something coming out of Montana yesterday that I can't show you because it's now off the visible satellite feed. But right about where this earthquake was, it looked like some kind of volcanic plume came out of the ground. I don't know what it was. It looked like steam or some kind of haze or something. It wasn't a fire. And it put a big plume way up in the sky. It mixed with the clouds and blew down to the southeast following basically the direction which way the arrow. I can't show it to you, though, because it's off the live feed now. You just have to take my word for it. Now, I saw that news report about the Russians saying that the United States is secretly planning for the eruption of Yellowstone. But I'm telling you guys, it's the backside of an ancient star fort, so to call it a super volcano. I mean, if it's going to erupt, it's because the star forts are reactivating or something. Now let's go over to the west, and there's a single earthquake marked as a double quake, twice reported. Central Idaho. This is above the magma chamber, supposedly, for Yellowstone, that goes down below Idaho and has a feeder from below Oregon. But that's the way the star fort's shaped. And in case you don't know what I'm talking about and you really think I'm joking or something like that or maybe you're not aware of the Star Fort situation, that Yellowstone Super Volcano is here, okay? But the giant ancient Star Fort that has two blast calderas on the back side of it, one here and the other back here, on the back side of the three of them, this one is the most pronounced. This one here. And in the middle of it is Edwards Air Force Base. The military bases are built in the middle of these. Oh, I just lost my internet. You gotta be kidding me, man. Oh, is it coming back now? Really? Look, man. Look, I, I, I just have to show it because the earthquakes are striking below this damn... Whatever, man. Whatever. Whatever. P 
People don't want to hear about it anyways. I don't want to talk about it. Want to shut my internet off because I'm talking about it? Okay, fine. We'll move on if I can. Let's go up to the northwest and look up this cluster of earthquakes. What a cluster. What a cluster this is. 0.4 Washington. Cluster in many, I mean it in many ways, guys. If you're on my job site, you might find that it's a cluster something or other. We can't use that language with children present. And I mean the nine-year-old army on YouTube. Now, let's go in and take a look and see where we're at. What's this location called? Looks like it's a giant mountain. A mountain with a place mark on it. The place mark says Mount Rainier Strato Volcano. Now, we're on the side of Mount Rainier. Don't worry, it's not going to erupt. But a cluster of earthquakes there, just like the cluster of earthquakes over at Yellowstone, is a signifying factor that there's something flowing in from the northwest. I have a warning going in the Seattle area for a 5.0 earthquake to strike by the end of this week. Today is Monday. So, next few days, we're looking for the Seattle Fault to go with a 5. We already got our 5 down to the south on the south side of the Juan de Fuca Fracture Zone. We come in from the north. We're going into the north part of the valley and over to the east. Now, starting here on the north side of the valley in California, going over to the east, what would you do if I told you it's more volcanoes? Pretty much all of it over to the east. Volcano, 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 volcano. Every single spot, either right next to one or very close to one. Let me show you. Earthquake epicenter right here. How do I know? Well, Black Butte Cone. How many times have we had to look up? And that's not Black Butt, guys. Black Butte, a pyroclastic cone west of Lassen National Park, was thought to be of Holocene age. But later mapping indicates a late Pleistocene age. From Miller in 89. This Miller, Miller set out to prove the volcanoes were all older. And guess what he proved? The volcanoes are all older. Turns out when you set out to prove something, you're likely to prove it. <laughs> Let's go down to the east by southeast to Canyon Dam, California. <laughs> That's no go off on Miller if he's still alive. Much love, dude. Or chick or whatever. I don't know if Miller's a chick or dude or whatever, man. Oh, I'm not supposed to say that. I might offend someone. How about this? I'm super offended that the whole science world and everybody in the freaking planet came stepping to take me out when I made huge discoveries in the world of geophysics that everybody said they wanted. So here's Lake Almanor. We're right on the side of Mount Lassen. Mount Lassen is a giant stratovolcano. Gi oh, my internet just died again. Oh, God, it's back now. Mount Lassen. We got a real problem with me showing the... Stratovolcanoes. It doesn't mean it's going to erupt. Settle down, guys. Jeez. My God. Hold on. Let me just sip my coffee. Get my Dutch Masters out. You gotta be kidding me, dude. All right. I'm going to do this update one handed while I have a cigar in the other. Or whatever you call this thing. Let's go over to the east. Go over to Nevada. I might cough a little bit while I'm doing this update. Don't worry. It's getting real professional here. All right. There we go. Now, take a look at this. See this right here? Well, maybe you don't see it because there's a bunch of place marks all over the thing. See all the volcanoes there? I'm going to turn them off. Now, around this is a series of ancient volcanoes around this giant oval shape. On the south side is Lake Tahoe. On the north side is Pyramid Lake. And at Lake Tahoe and Pyramid Lake, we have volcanic features. Let me turn them on. Steamboat Springs, well known. It's been drilled a dozen or more times for large geothermal pumping operations. Oh, really? Well, you're not going to be able to see it because, you know, you know, 
let me click on the place mark from the Smithsonian. You can just pause it and read it if you're watching it back on YouTube. I'll probably have to watch this back because I'm not able to see anything myself here while I'm live. How many times are we going to shut this off while I'm doing a live update? So let's go in and see what's here at Pyramid Lake. Well, those little splotches that are on the ground that are taking a long time to load are geothermal features. These are the tufa deposits, tufa, tufa, uh, which are calcium deposits that have come up from geothermal. It's a huge geothermal field, but that's a reservation. It has not been exploited or drilled. Okay, why am I taking the time to show all this shit to you, try to freaking show you, when I'm getting shut down so hard to even try and show it? This is an ancient super volcano here that the freaking professionals missed. Or is it a super volcano? It could just be like Yellowstone. Because right here, next to it, we have military out the you-know-what. These are all bunkers, right? But let me back it out and show you what's really here. Another giant ancient star fort, 300 miles long. So the first one I showed you here... It's indisputable. It's in the shape of a bastion fort, but it's 300 miles long with the Grand Canyon blown out on the back side, the back right side blown out with the Grand Canyon. And in the middle, we have Edwards Air Force Base. Okay. Now, the one next to it's a little harder to see, but it's there. It goes up to a pinnacle point right here and comes back down this way. They're centered slightly there. Now it's pointing perfectly to the top of the screen. Now what's up at the pinnacle point? The military depot. Okay, now hold up. So we got military in the middle of this one. We got military in the middle of this one. What about this one? This one goes up and comes back and goes all the way back down to the edge of Yellowstone. Here's Yellowstone National Park. This one is somewhat hard to see, but I mean, you should be able to see it. It's got a giant crater on the back right side. Oh, and this one's got a giant depression on the back right side, which is Salt Lake City. But the third one, up here in the pinnacle tip, there's no military base. Don't worry. It's not a military base here. Look what it is. Let me turn on my borders and labels and places. It's the Facebook Data Center and Apple Data Center. Facebook Data Center, Apple Data Center. All the power and all that, look at that. Wow. So Facebook and Apple data centers there in the middle of that one. So there's three of them. Three giant, ancient, 300-mile-long star forts. Military base, military base, Facebook data center and Apple center. I call that a military base, too. And on the back side, Yellowstone, Salt Lake City, and the Grand Canyon. Back side, back right side of each one blown out with something. You have to tell me that's all freaking chance. No way, man. Not chance. Not chance. It's just disturbing because it means some weird stuff's going on. Ancient technology from a long time ago. The military's aware, and that's why they built a freaking base in the middle of each one. Meanwhile, the earthquakes are striking there, and that's how I found any of this stuff. I would have never known about any of it if it weren't for the earthquakes striking below them. 300-mile-long fort of any kind is insane. Let me put it this way. Whoever built them a long time ago, either they had cannons that were the size of cities or the bastion fort things BS. And that's not what they're for. They're shaped like that for cymatic or resonance purposes or wireless power, whatever. Not for cannons or arrows. It's 300 freaking miles long. Each one Made out of mountains, too, so they're thousands of feet high. Who had the ability to sculpt and shape mountains and the military building a base in the middle tip of each one? That proves that something weird's going on. So should we ignore the earthquakes that are striking at each one? Let's go down to the south. I mean, we shouldn't. You shouldn't ignore that. Now, it's going to lead to troubling questions. Like, why is that there? And what is it doing? And why are there earthquakes striking next to it and below it? Probably has something to do with very low frequency. 
Probably has something to do with the volcanoes there. Probably has something to do with the wave passing through the plate being electrical in its own nature. A very low frequency electrically induced wave being guided and shaped by man-made or other made. God knows who made them. Dinosaurs? Fred Flintstone on a giant brontosaurus? I don't know! Hey, Fred Flintstone was a giant if you think about it. Okay. Let's go on down to the south. Take a look at what's going on across Oregon. Now that we got fully off the tracks here. But is, is it off the track? It's not off the tracks anymore. This used to be considered going off the tracks, talking about star forts and weird stuff. But, I mean, it's there. You can't tell me it's paradelia with the military bases in the middle of each one. Okay. Unless somebody in the military is doing paradelia to build bases. <laughs> yeah, we're going to put this base there. It looks great. Looks great. Yeah, okay, anyway. Nothing across Oregon. Must be great. That's great. No earthquakes in Oregon. We got one right down to the border at Lakeview. Well, let's go take a look and see what's happening. And I'm not going off of it. Dude, this, this update has like focused on the military double wide. Like double wise, double wide. Yeah, double wide. Put me out in a double wide out in the middle of nowhere, y'all. You'll never hear from me again. And it's not because they'll do anything from me. I'll just... Call me a bogan out in the middle of Australia somewhere. Let's zoom in and see what's nearby. Let's turn on all our place marks, see if we have any nearby volcanoes. Well, wow, look at that. We got a couple over to the east and a couple over to the west. Over to the east is where I would pay attention. This place called Bittner Butte. An ancient underwater volcano that formed a long time ago. And on the side of it, Old lava flows that are weathered down and exposed over time. Black basalt and lava rock. Anyway, next to it is Blowout Mountain. I think that the name on it kind of kind of tells you what happened at some point in the past. But Blowout Mountain, Bittner Butte. Whenever we get earthquake activity next to these two in particular, I look back out in the ocean, out in the lightning bolt-shaped Juan de Fuca Fracture Zone. Out here for a new earthquake to strike of significant size. Now, if you follow the line of the Juan de Fuca like this, it heads right down towards this ridge, which contains all those volcanoes that I just showed you, including Bittner Butte right behind it. So what I think happens is tension builds up here, the wave is directed in, and we start to see activity here on land first before the precipitating wave breaks out here. So in other words, it comes in, reflects back to itself, and when it reflects back into itself, it breaks. But we see a sign of it coming in first. It reflects off this like a wall, basically. You can kind of see it. It's going north and south. Reflects off it like a wall, comes back into itself, and you get a big break up here. Now, we already had a 5.5, but I would think that that means something else is getting ready to happen further out here, something bigger out in the ocean. I'm not going to issue a forecast for it, though, because we still have several things going on forecast-wise. I'm waiting for four other large earthquakes, and I, if they don't hit, I'm not going to issue any more warnings yet until we figure out what's going on on the Pacific. This is just next level what's going on, guys. Like, we need a team of people. Where It, it really sucks that Mike is gone because between the weather and the earthquakes and the solar and everything we need like a, a grip of people to do this to start covering the geophysics and all the weird things that are happening the, the oddities that we don't dismiss the oddities we don't call it conspiracy no no that that's for the normieville over on the freaking mainstream media if you guys are trying to stop the discussion here online you're going to woefully fail miserably okay let's go down to the south let's recap a line of earthquakes is coming in from the northwest, going down to Yellowstone. Yellowstone, backside of an ancient star fort. Out here at the pinnacle tip, Mount Rainier is moving in, going across the middle of Idaho at the supposed magma chamber for that supervolcano below the star fort. As we go further to the south, we get down here right along the border, and we're right next to Bittner Butte. As we go further into California, 
we have our 5.5 off the coast. And then that, let's get into the rest of the stacks of quakes. So going over to the east, next to Lake Tahoe and Pyramid Lake, around the super volcano there, or caldera, around the pinnacle tip of the star fort there at Hawthorne, or I'm sorry, what's the name of that place? Let's go find out. This place. Uh, I thought it was not Hawthorne. No, I'm, don't I have a name? Really? Come on, guys. Sierra. There we go. Sierra. The Sierra Army Ammo Depot. Probably empty now, right? Anyway, over to the east, down to the south we go, and down to the south we go along the coast. Now here, this huge stack north of the Bay Area is at a volcano. The geysers. Clear Lake and Mount Kanakti. But Clear Lake Volcanic Field and the geysers at Geyserville. And guess what's at Geyserville and the geysers? Geysers. But humans have come in to take control. Harness the energy. Take it and create power. Electrical power. Very low frequency. Electrical power. Unlimited power. Do it. That's my best. You like that? Hold on. Here, here's them when they're like going to do the volcano and drill it. Do it. All right. That's a Star Wars thing. Okay, guys. Sorry. Sorry. Let's go down along the... That was a good. That was good though, right? Right. Future Emperor, Emperor Palpatine voice. Down to the south, we dead end at Parkfield, California. Let's go take a look. Show lame, California. Show lame. Let's go to show lame and see what's going on there. It's go lame, Dutch. Just go lami. <laughs> All right, Blaine. Go drive away in your beamer. Blaine in his beamer says it's God, so lame, man. Go lami, Dutch. Okay. We're right next to Colinga. Kettleman City, Missouri Triangle, and a thousand million drill points. That may be an exaggeration because there's not a billion drill points. Let's just say we're next to a million drill points. One million. Not one billion. We start up here with thousands of drill points. Right along the San Andreas. Real great idea. Here's San Andreas. Start drilling. Drill, baby, drill. Right up to it. All the way down to the south. Now, right along the middle of here, we jump off the San Andreas like a derailed train. At these drill points, we jump over to the east. Go down. Jump over. And lo and behold, we have the same sized earthquakes striking at the southeast side of the valley in a trajectory. We look for this to happen. The wave to come down, go over, cross all these perforation points across the valley, dead end into the Garlock. Okay, now, over to the east. New swarm activity breaking out here. Volcano Peak. See where it says Little Lake? I bet there's a bunch of little lakes there right now with all the weird weather going on out there. The Pacific Oscillation. Pacific Oscillation happening, Dutch. Yes, the Pacific Oscillation. The back and forth. But I see this, and I see big storms popping up out of the desert from right next to these things. I think maybe heat might be coming up from down below and steaming off an aquifer. And it comes out across the mountain peaks or something. Not like a geyser. More like 20 miles of just hazy area that turns into storms. And that's what's really pushing the whole convective process. The undiscovered convective process of cloud formation coming from mountains that are heated from down below. Anyway. We have a stack of earthquakes there. You think it's chance? How about up to the north, a stack of earthquakes? Right at Ubihibi Crater. You think that's chance? 
Volcano Peak and UBB craters going, while a bunch of steam's coming out of the ground, while the plate's in motion, while the fires are happening, while the earthquakes are spreading across the damn plate. All at once. I'm the only guy here now. Everybody's either dead or gone. No shit. Or shilled out and sold out. Or threatened into silence. I can't believe this is all happening. It's perfect that it's me that's the le- you know. It really is. Let's go down in the middle of the Mojave Desert and go see what's going on down here. Oh, it's a quarry blast at Boron, California. Get the boron out of the ground. That's for all you gardeners out there. What about down to the south? What about down in the middle of L.A.? Now, I'm extending my L.A. warning. I have a warning for L.A. that expires tonight. We are looking at L.A. for an upper four to low five to strike. And it expires basically today. I am extending that warning for two days, 48 hours. I'm not taking anything beyond that, guys. I don't normally extend warnings at all. But in light of the new five that struck up north, it's most likely taking just three additional days that, like I said, three days ago. So here we are. We're right next to an oil pumping operation with our only earthquake of the bunch reported. And is it an earthquake? I think it is. Pretty sure. Zero point. No, it's. Listen, look at that. A negative 0.5 kilometer depth. Hold up. How could we be negative 0.5 kilometers above anything when this is an 11 foot sea level this is a calculation error they've made a calculation error i'm going to call it a surface earthquake a crack has formed in the ground here and they're miscalculating the depth on the quake putting it up in the sky that that's what i'm saying it's not a sky quake. It's a surface earthquake that they've miscalculated. We're next to Loyola University. Maybe they get some people on top of that. On the recalculation of all that. Is there anything else here nearby? What's with this big open area right here? Why would they have a big open area across an area that's just... I mean, if you could turn this into some kind of development, why wouldn't they? Oh... Big electrical power coming through there, too. All right. I have to show all that because I'm warning Central L.A. I've warned Central L.A. for an upper four to low five. And so far, this is like the extent of it. So that's way low. Everything from Ridgecrest to the south is. Notice, there's once we get to Ridgecrest, the big stacks, and then once south of there, just onesie twosies all the way across. That's going to change. What's causing these stacks? A wave. A wave is coming in and vibrating through the area. That's why we're getting hit at all the volcanoes. The plate is shifting. Clearly the plate is shifting. Look at the last few days of earthquakes going across the North American plate. Here, first of all, here's our fives. Here's our fours. Here's our threes. Here's our twos. Here's our ones. Notice anything? Let me turn down the rings a little bit so you can see this. Compare that to this. Starts in the northwest, goes around the outside edge of the deformed edge of the purple part of the craton, then goes over to the rusty brownish part, goes down through Texas, New Mexico, back up through Oklahoma, across Missouri, and up the east coast. And it's literally a stepping stone path of the same sized quakes. Across the outside edge of the whole dang craton. This is one of my biggest discoveries. That there's a flow of something that goes around these things, the plates. And drops off the earthquakes along the way. And it loses a little bit of steam as it goes across the entire distance. So, to go from fives to fours to threes to twos across North America. Is not that much loss of energy. But it's not that a five on the west coast. Is causing twos on the east coast. It's not that this earthquake is causing these. It's that all of these earthquakes are being caused by a wave or waves that are traveling across the edge of the craton 
or plate boundaries. And that wave drops off the quakes along the way, and that's why we get the same-sized earthquakes all the way across the way without much loss. But why is there not much loss? The wave's really powerful and really large. It's a very low frequency, electrically induced wave in the plate. But it flows physically around things. What an update this has been. This gets back to the start of the update with seeing things unintentionally on other systems that you're not meant to see. So seeing an earthquake on a system that you're not intended to see a spread on. This is a perfect example. We were not, well, the guy who made Earthquake 3D and all the professionals in the world when they're reporting the quakes were not intending for people like me or you or them to see a standing wave across a huge area. An unintended observation that comes from just plotting earthquakes on a three-dimensional surface. You can now see it. Oh, a new earthquake has been reported over here. Wow, look at that. In Romania on the edge of the Craytown in Europe. Taking a little bit of a step down as we go around the bend of the plate. This one just struck. That was not there at the start of this update. Now it's there. It's going around the outside edge of Europe. The wave is progressing. A stepping stone path. Leapfrog. Over this one from yesterday, we leapfrogged over here to the edge of the Craton. White-colored earthquake from today. White-colored earthquake from today. Pink colored earthquake from yesterday, leapfrogged over, going around the outside edge of Europe. You should be able to see it now. It took me years of observation to see this. Funny story on how I found it. I got annoyed. I got annoyed. I was having to make videos on this crap instead of doing it live. I was actually making videos, recording, processing, editing, uploading. I still upload, but now I just record, I wing it, and I talk live to my audience. I don't bother with the whole make a video thing. I mean, this is a video, but I don't bother producing it or, you know, processing it or any of that crap. I just leave everything in it, live as I say it. But that this whole process, now seriously now, this whole process has been a process of discovery live before a group of people that either A, didn't believe it, or B, were considered conspiracy theorists. I'm getting way off track, but I'd like to just remind everybody, you need to have an earthquake plan. How about that? Oh, 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 yeah, Africa got hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the seven, I forgot to add. Yeah, yeah don't worry about it. 6.8 to 7.0 earthquake struck south of Africa. Real rare. Never happens. Once in a blue moon. Once every few years, maybe. A new seven struck south on the plate boundary. That's uh, not an earthquake forecast hit for me. We warned for six to strike Mayotte, and I said Africa was going to be in the mix this week, but this came in on the south side of the plate boundary, south of Africa. I mean, technically, it's still classified as the region, but... If I'm looking here and it's all the way down there, that's 8,000, well, how many miles? 4,000 miles? No. 2,000 miles? I'm trying to get it down to 200. That'd be 100, you know, 100 times more distance than I'm considering acceptable. All right, y'all. I'm going to save this as a video and we're going to put it out over on YouTube. I, I really want to get that through to the military that the military installations, Tyndall Air Force Base, the National Guard Reserve there, it's showing up on weather satellite. And if I can see it, and I know what it is, don't you think our enemies would know? And don't you think that would give away our position if you're using that system? Whatever it is. I, it could be as much as just a simple weather report being beamed down from infrared, whatever it is, or beamed up to a satellite. But once you beam up and you identify your location on the ground, you better hightail out of there. And I mean big time. Because with DEWs and everything else, instant delivery systems return. If you're in a military situation and you identify your position, you might as well just turn on a flashlight in the dark. 
on a special operations mission, just go ahead and go ahead and get out your glow sticks. Start rave dancing. Whatever that is. What's a rave dance? I don't know. Try it. It's 1990s. It's called hard style. All right. Oh, yeah. I know all about... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dutch knows all about hard style. <laughs> your teacher has a has a, a second past. My best job ever was running the laser lights at a nightclub. That was the best job ever. You'd think YouTube would be, right? Nah. Nah, laser light guy at the... Uh, the light guy at the techno club was probably the best job a dude could ever ask for. 3.57 p.m. Central Time. Dust off your emergency kits. Get ready, guys. Something big's getting ready to go down. It could be a big earthquake. could be a giant plate-wide collapse. It could be a super volcanic eruption. It could be D-E-W fires. It could be invasion. It could be war. It could be shutdown. It could be E-M-P. It could be solar. There is a possibility it could be all of those at once. Do I have any good news? Well, No. I don't really have any good news today for you. I mean, there's no, there, there's light at the end of the tunnel. I mean, you know, there, God exists. Jesus is real. But other than that, guys, uh, the good news is pretty slim right now. Oh, you don't believe that? Uh, uh, uh. Oh, you're going to be bummed out then. <laughs> gonna... Sorry, man. Uh... Sorry, man. Didn't mean to offend you, dude. Should I, should I upload this to YouTube? Yeah? You think? This is me in my rare, true form. This is me unpolished. This is the diamond in the rough Dutch. Yeah, you like it? Yeah, yeah. Some people do, some people don't. Let's get over and take a look at the Space Lounge. There we are. Let's get on out of here to a... Let's go to the mall. Anybody want to go to the mall? Listen to some vaporwave music and mall soft and walk around all spaced out at the mall. Do they even have malls anymore? Probably not. Zoomers would zoom around on their hoverboards and... That would not be safe. They'd be flying off rails and... Eat a Tide Pod. Eat a Tide Pod, get on their thing. They're flying off the edge. Yeah, and now you know why they made malls illegal. Oh, they didn't? They didn't make malls illegal? Oh, no, no. What year is this? Oh, that's right. Okay. I'm, I'm a couple years off. Sorry, guys. Got to get back on the time machine. Peace out.